Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Worldwide Wrestling Network Presents Glow. And we are moving on to the second round of the Mildred Burke Invitational. The winners of the first uh, round brackets will be going toe-to-toe -to -toe here tonight, moving forward and advancing for the opportunity to become the Glow Crown Champion. And I am Remarkable Randall Reigns, and I want to introduce my broadcast colleague, Mr. Hamrick. And, as always, the pleasure is all yours. We have a loaded show here in this tournament. We have got Asha the Conqueror versus Liberty Washington. We have got uh, the Andrea Washington versus Rose. Kelly Kazarian versus Jada Storm. And Desiree Howling Wolf versus Roxana Stone. And in a special appearance, a special challenge match, if you will, we have got. A match featuring Amethyst Raven and one <laughs> Kinsey Corvin. There's and been quite this, a Twitter match, feud between these yes. two. And this, this is uh, this is because of a back and forth to, between these two on social media that we will touch base on a little further when it's time when it's time for the match. And here we have. Kenzie Corvin uh, getting her uh, took us handed to her by Jada Storm. Uh, Amethyst Raven pointing it out. And uh, we have two of the uh, individuals who lost out in the first round now basically uh, uh, coming at each other for those losses. Well, and. They, they these two were going back and forth before that even occurred. It, it, uh, going excellent back, point. Going back. Going back to Amethyst, um, Amethyst going as far as to accusing uh, Kenzie and Kitty Devereaux of being up to some some shenanigans in their singles match. Yep that that um, is that is absolutely so I mean, correct. Uh, Amethyst seems to have it out for Kenzie Corvin, uh, thinking Kenzie's not on the up and up. But uh, let's take but a she moment. May have, she may have precedent given Kenzie's father. But uh, let's take a moment and take a look at or a, at least discuss our opening match this evening. It is Asha the Conqueror who won in a very it's brutal method uh, and then also attacked her opponent. Billy Jean Payne in the opening round, and we have an update regarding Billy Jean. She has been injured and is honestly been put on the reserve list. She and And yes, and she she can continue to work, but we are we do everything we can to take care of our superstars here in the Worldwide Wrestling Network. And so the championship committee has decided. And the championship committee has decided to reserve Billie Jean Payne for at least a month until she is 100% uh, cleared by our medical staff. And that is what makes Asha the Conqueror so dangerous. And uh, honestly, as me, a fan of Liberty Washington, very afraid for Liberty Washington going into this match. Asha has so shown only minimal remorse for the damage that she has done to Billie Jean Payne, and I feel that the Conqueror may want to continue this path of destruction with Liberty Washington being the next 
tree or mountain in her way. The thing to point out here is we have seen Liberty Washington take a few more risks than we are accustomed to seeing her take in uh, recent appearances she's had for us. I, most notably, the, this uh, coast to coast move that she's been doing. Um, it, it's very unusual for Liberty Washington to take these kind of risks or those kind of risks. It, it's I, it's a question in my mind of of a thing where you know is Liberty trying to keep up with some of the younger talent. And or the that, newer talent. That's a very good point. I mean, Liberty Washington has been with us for a while, and it's always good to try to freshen up the repertoire, but every now and then, some things are just a little too dangerous to try yes. to embark on. But Liberty is going to have to pull out all the stops if she is going to conquer the Conqueror in Asha, and with that, let's take it to ringside. And Asha the Conqueror coming out with that Mastodon helmet as a tribute to Big Van Vader. And it is an intimidating presence. She creates an aura of fear and destruction that only we see rarely in our women's division. And yes. that, that is not saying that our women are not intimidating and incredibly no, athletic. We, there, are, there are some very intimidating women in our women's division, but none of them are intimidating in the same fashion as Asha the Conqueror. And Asha is has legitimately injured Billie Jean Payne, and I, I honestly, I, I have to step away from my broadcast journalism uh, background and, and have to step away a moment and as a person concerned for someone who I've known for a very long time in Liberty, Washington, this, this match scares me, especially how aloof Asha has been regarding a very serious injury to Billie Jean Payne. Well, and we don't know the full, full seriousness of the injury, and that's that's one of the reasons for this 30-day reserve situation. They were originally thinking it was a minor injury, and it very quickly appeared that it might be a little more than that. And here comes Liberty Washington, focused and determined as ever, Ready to answer any challenge. And Liberty, like you said, has been taking some very big risk. And I just hope that she is able to make sure that those risks pay off this well, evening. Another, another thing that if we would be hesitant to mention here, or hesitant to overlook here, Liberty Washington had a very hard-hitting match of her own in the first round against Milanista. Yes. Uh, a match that, that was uh, a little more hard-hitting than perhaps we were expecting going into it. I gotta say, it was an unexpected challenge, but it was an unexpected treat as well. It was very... Yes very hard, uh, incredible matchup. We should, uh, if you hadn't seen the first round, you should go back and check that out as we are going to open the stages and Asha just feel throwing Liberty. Liberty sweeping the leg, Cobra Kai style, and now we are getting some exchanges and Liberty being really smart here, going for the legs. Hammer throw by Liberty, attempting a hurricane runner, but Asha with a power pop. Asha just caught her on that Hurricane Rana and threw her like she was nothing. I mean, you've got to wonder just what kind of power this woman has. And Asha is going for the legs as well, laying in big moves here. And the strength 
of the Conqueror with that deadlift suplex. There, there's only a couple. There's only a couple of women in this promotion who can deadlift like that. And, and finally, Liberty Washington I mean, connecting with the Hurricanrana. Sharp shoot kick to the spine. That that is an impressive display by Asha. And Liberty dropping the bulldog on Asha. Oh, but it oh that was an ugly that running was, DDT. That was. I'm, and that the conqueror just sees the hand. Oh wait 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 wait! Liberty able to do the drop to hold on the ropes. And this is where she needs Asha the Conqueror on the mat. I don't think she's going to keep her there for very long. Oh! Well, and this is what you've been talking about, Mr. Hammer. These risks. She just threw Asha over the top rope. And I, she's contemplating something. But Asha was able to bring herself back into the ring. Yeah. Big splash by Liberty. But it, it, and it's probably for the better that she didn't try anything high risk there. I mean, she needs to keep her own well-being in mind. I mean, we've seen Asha snatch people out of midair. I mean. Yes. Well, I mean, she snatched, she snatched Liberty already out of that Hurricane Rana. So, and I mean. Liberty connects with the diving corkscrew uppercut and that is usually a prelude to the red white and blue plex but again wait a minute she's got her tied up in the tree of woe and liberty I, look at this is what i this is, i think i know what she's going for and i think she's crazy for doing it this is not this isn't how she should try she's got a great repertoire of moves and it connects but Look at the damage she did to herself. She hurt her back as much as she hurt Asha there. And that nasty power bomb at the beginning of the match is probably didn't help matters. Damage on top of damage cover. And Washington and, and this is the problem with high risk moves. It is high risk, high reward. It can connect and it can give a great um, payoff, but sometimes the payoff isn't enough. And look at this stranglehold slam. Yeah, th this is, I mean, uh, not a very good situation for Liberty to be in. Even if, I mean, she's on the offensive right now. Let's just hope she can stay there. And the Conqueror is now being stretched out in that surfboard by Washington. And this is where Liberty should keep her if she wants to um, have a chance at winning this. And rolling up with the Hurricane Rana, one, and the Conqueror able to just power she could, through. Yeah, she, she powered out of that on, on a one count. That, that tells me it's something right there. And a big front power slam. Again, assaulting the back of Liberty Washington. Liberty trying to fight back here, but I mean, she keeps on throwing her into that turnbuckle, and and I don't know how well that is. And what a combo there! That one. drop kick into the Hurricane Rana, and Liberty finally dancing with what brung her those uh, the her speed and athleticism, and creating some distance, and middle rope drop kick. Just two boots right to the face of Asha. But Asha powering back. And and not just powering back, but powering Liberty's head onto that bottom turnbuckle. And look at this. Oh my god! That I think her man. leg just got caught in the top rope with that I, move. Yeah. I mean And Asha double order hook power pop. Just Asha, this is what Asha needs going on the warpath here. And now Asha stacking Liberty Washington up on the top turnbuckle, booting her off. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
She just kicked Ed, her to the outside off that turnbuckle and Ed and Liberty I, Washington. I, I can't tell. I, I don't know if she hit her leg or if she hit her shoulder, but a limb hit the apron. She's trying yeah. to get back into the ring to continue but the match. Took, that took a lot out of her right there. You got to think she's and look I mean, at this. Oh my God! A big, big gut buster slam, and now the conqueror has her sights on Washington, and I think it's gonna be. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, that reminds. I I think Liberty. Zach. That was an awesome bomb, and the conqueror with the cover. One, I think two. Zach. Three! And Asha! Just laughing there. Liberty Washington is not moving. Liberty is stone cold. And we're not talking about Steve Austin there, she, folks. She is, she's going to need some assistance getting back to the ring. I'm getting out of the ring, I'm getting to the back. And and Asha the Conqueror is moving on to the next round. I and wow, what a match that, that between Washington and yeah. but also the warpath that the Conqueror is on. I mean, just devastation left and right. And, I mean, I hate to cut this short, but we got to go to the next match. And we that do. is the Andrea Washington versus Rose. And these two have these, been back and been forth yes, throughout this tournament, number. before this tournament, and now... They, uh, they faced off a number of times on Monday Night Melee and Cyclone. And now, hopefully, with the stakes as high as they are, maybe, maybe this match will be enough to bury the hatchet. I just hope that hatchet doesn't wind up being buried in someone's skull. Well, the, the other thing going into this, I mean... This has been a professional rivalry that's gotten a look. It's not really gotten as personal as it could have, I don't think. But it it basically stems from what Xandria argued has her being Bring overlooked at Krampus Night. Um, you know, I get where you she's coming the from. But Rose has been a dominant the presence since us. she debuted. For the Worldwide Wrestling Network. And really has and has been a dominant presence in GWW and other professional wrestling organizations across the uh, digital wrestling and virtual wrestling world. And with, I mean, Z. Andrea Washington, I mean, trained by the souls of mischief, really only been an in-ring competitor for a short amount of time and very impressive for the amount of time that she has been a competitor. And but She is still what you would argue is a, um, we would call a young lioness in this promotion. Um, you know, and, and it, it remains to be seen if she might have, you know, might have had a point about being overlooked when it came to being seated for this tournament. And Rose. This woman definitely wasn't overlooked. Not at all. She has been almost a focal point by the booking committee. Uh, incredibly impressed, scouted heavily by Erwin Roberts and Kimiko Nassan. And that, if that doesn't put her on a to-watch list in the World Wide Wrestling Network, then I don't know what does. And Rose is just, despite her affiliation 
with MC Adams, who has been running rock rough shot over the uh, Monday Night Melee roster, especially recently Delucious Thunder. Uh, Rose has been a, a almost begrudgingly a fan favorite simply because of her uh, presence. I don't know if it's, she's been begrudgingly a fan favorite or if it's just simply the fans are appreciating she is focusing on this tournament, which all of the women uh, in our women's division, for the most part, have been incredibly focused on this tournament in recent weeks. There, there's not been anything that, you know, she's not indicated her thoughts on her husband's activities or actions one way or the other. And wait a minute, Zandra looking to end this match quickly with the Hurricane Rala roll-up. And, oh! And Rosé made Zandra pay with a single leg drop kick right to the mush. And Rosé, oh! Ugly brain buster, sheer drop style. Reminds me of some of the stuff we saw in Japan in the 90s. And then just picking her up, single arm. Inverted Bulldog, and this is a hard-hitting match here. This is a very hard-hitting match. These two ladies, I mean, they're, they're both competitors, first and foremost, and they're wanting to prove that against one another this evening. And Rose dropping Zeantra right into the knee brace, crawling up, and uh, we've seen this before, this headbutts, the rampage, just three headbutts right in the row and I don't know how healthy that is for either competitor but I mean, there it is it, it can't do, you know it can't be the um, safest move out there but I mean this is pro wrestling not um, calisthenics and Rose trying to line up see Andrea Washington and Got her up, and wait a minute, Zeandra able to rotate out, land on her feet. That does not make Rosé happy, and Rosé looking to add to the punishment, and got her up into the power bomb. And now, Rosé targeting Zeandra's leg. I, I'm not sure I blame her, I mean, Sandra's gonna flip out of it, you know, take out what she's using to land on. And now see Andrea, wait a minute. Paw panel suplex. We've seen her put um, several ladies away with that move and cover center of the ring, great ring psychology, and the kick out by Rosette. And see Andrea really putting up a fight here and attempting some kind of cravat move and woo, big knee by Rosé. Quick kick out. A big knee and a quick cover following that knee, and, which, was, yes. which was very smart on Rosé's part. And Rosé... Here's that rampage headbutt again. And three more headbutts. Actually, that was, that was more like four. I and... Mean, and now, look, look, continuing assaulting the head and then going right for a cover. Very, very smart on behalf of Rosé there. See, Andrea... You can, tell, you can tell Rosé is getting a little frustrated, though, after that kick out. And... Oh, the double tap. The knee and the neck breaker. And... Wait a minute, Zeandria able to slip away one more time. Big belly-to-belly -belly suplex by Zeandria Washington. And it looks like, it looks like Zeandria is measuring her now. And I, wait a minute, this is, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, Rosé fighting out. Rosé fighting out. And now Rosé, oh, dropping Zeandria right on her head. 
What a quick pickup and drop. And she's going to this headbutt again, and a and, series of headbutts again. And, and I mean, this, I mean, this could give both of them a concussion at this point. Uh, you're, you're not wrong there. But I, I mean, you know, you've got to think these ladies are both probably a little hard-headed as well. And look at this combination here. Boom! And Ro Rose may be counting on her hard-headedness with by the repeated uh, uses of that move. And uh, wait, wait, wait. Xandria <laughs> cutting off Rose. Again, big belly to belly suplex. Will Xandria be able to capitalize? Quick cover. One, two. No, there wasn't even a two count there. Just shy of a two count. And now Washington trying to Washington get Rose. Trying to measure her again. And Rose slips out this time. Catches with the double knees, but I think that Xander Washington had braced herself, got the arms up, and now we are in a Malenko-esque exchange. Well, almost uh, Malenko-esque, I mean. Now. What's happening? What's going on here? Wait, wait a minute. Rosé. What it? What the hell? Up top. Uh, and, oh my <laughs> god! Suplex! Oh. Falcon arrow! That's gotta be over. This has gotta be it. Three. It definitely is over. Let's do it. What a combination. We saw that uh, before with Hannibal Havana. That was a move that he used to great success in the history of the World Wide Asleep Network. And, but wait a minute. Look at Rose making her way. But wait. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, Rose's got a chair. Stop her, ref. ref. Oh my god. Ref, what no. Are you doing? And then again, I think she would have hit him there. So I can't say I blame her for not wanting to hit the ref. And Rose attacking Andrea Washington after the match. And. Much I, as I think, I, as much as we wanted to think this might be over, it's not anywhere near it, I don't and think. And Rose just taking this issue between her and Zandra Washington to a whole new level with that unprompted, unnecessary attack. And ladies and gentlemen, as the ring clears, we are getting ready to have a showdown between Amethyst Raven and Kinsey Corvin. Uh, over the last couple of weeks on social media, these two have been firing uh, insults back and forth and just absolutely um, just eviscerating one another on social media. This led and, and to... This, this whole thing was started, though. This whole thing was started, though, by Amethyst Raven, who I guess was seeing uh, some of Kinsey's comments on social media, and I don't know if she was taking exception or if she was going to try to make a name for herself the same manner. I don't know, but she started going after Kenzie Gorvin. And uh, Kenzie's the daughter of Gaz Gorvin. She is not someone who can might necessarily want to try to play mind games with. Um, or try to, you know, mess around with casually. She's going to, uh, you know, if you poke that hornet's nest, uh, you're gonna get stung, you know, and if you kick that hornet's nest, and if, if you, you know, it, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens here. But all I can say is that 
I am looking forward to this match between Kinsey Corvin and Amethyst Raven. And let's take it right to ringside. And here comes Amethyst Raven, who made her debut in the Mildred Burke Invitational in a uh, against Desiree Howling Wolf. And, and as much as she's talking about Kenzie's loss to, to Jada Storm, she lost to Desiree Howling Wolf in the first round. Desiree was at least kind enough to shake her hand and, you know, uh, congratulate the rookie on, on a nice tip. Uh, uh, you know, Jada had reason for what she did to Kenzie Corbin after the match, one would argue. Yes. Uh, but, you know, one might, might say that Jada might have pushed a few buttons there. And Amethyst Raven waiting for Kenzie Corbin to come out and And there uh, uh, is Kinsey. Some and look off to you. This is not normally how Kinsey. Wait a minute. Kinsey. Kinsey Corbin flanked by these two masked individuals. And now walking with them to the Corbin sisters. This what is we we've heard rumors about this and I I I thought it was a myth, but I mean I now it uh, just a a week ago a a letter was posted mentioning something about a a young lady named River that was adopted by Gaz Corbin. And of course, Corvin's uh, affiliation with one of the original members of the Kendrick, Mary Morgan. Uh, I think the two of them had a daughter. And, and, and are these the are these the three children of Gaz Corvin? They, they appear to be. And okay, but but still, why are they here? And wait a minute. Kinsey Corbin just left. Kinsey Corbin just took off through the crowd, leaving Amethyst Raven to deal with these. And, and I don't even know their names. I uh, I think the uh, the young woman in the black tank, the the young Korean woman's got to be River Corbin, the one that we heard was adopted. And that would make that would make the. Gert won in the halter top. V? V Corbin? Uh, v or, or, I think it's V for Vendetta. I mean, I think her name is Vendetta Corbin, but she answers. Only v. Gaz Corbin would name her name is Kid Vendetta. Have you ever met Mary Morgan? Uh, no, I, I, I have had the pleasure. She was blacklisted long before I, I was ever the announcer here at the World Wide Wrestling if Network. If anybody's going to name a child Vendetta, that's, it's her. And the, the, these, the Corbin sisters, like a murder of crows, picking the bones of Amethyst Raven. Uh, a murder of crows, a pack of bad wolves, whatever you want to call them. These two are, are essentially mugging Amethyst Raven. And they're toying around with her. And, I mean, as soon as one's done, the next one takes up and this is like two cats playing with a mouse swatting it back and forth and this is this is not what Amethyst Raven signed up for this isn't what the championship no, it's, committee it's, it's signed up for Amethyst Raven fighting bravely here but it's two on one and I mean these two and, and you say what you will they're, they're not small girls. 
No, they are I not. Mean, they're very, they're very powerful built young women. And I mean, again, I, I can only think that if, if Vendetta is the daughter of Mary Morgan, that would say that would explain a lot right and, there. And Vendetta Corbin with the Romero special, and I, I don't know how Amethyst pulled out and was able to get out, but was caught right by that Kindred style drop to hold face buster. Yeah. That, that we are getting all kinds of clues that these are affiliated with the they, Kindred. They are, I mean, they're, they're identifying themselves as the Corbin sisters. They're definitely affiliated with the Kindred. And look, look at this from behind coming up and, and it's dropping. Her up like there was nothing right there. She just picked her up like, like she was tossing the sack of potatoes. And, oh my god, what a combination. Headbutt right to the spot. And you gotta think, if that had been and, a little closer, it might have been a, a full splash. And, just Amethyst Raven on absolute defense here, but doesn't know which way to turn. Oh my god, Dragon Suplex followed up by a double sledge. This is... This is a mugging here. This, this is, I mean, I, this is something that uh, we, we shouldn't be seeing in our women's division. And big pile driver and Vendetta going for the cover. Amethyst! Amethyst, Amethyst what the hell are you doing? Lay down! She's, stay down, Amethyst. And a double stay DDT! Down. River's beckoning her to get up. This is... This is absolutely... This is... I, I, I'm at a loss for words here. They are destroying this young lady here. And now, take your... Throwing her out of the ring. And whoa! Wait a minute! Up and over, big time! That's right to the floor! By D. Corbin! That. She just leaped that like it was nothing. I mean, you, you've got to wonder ju just what is, just how much skill this young lady has. And, wait, wait, wait. No! What's this? What? What is? She should have went for the cover there. No, no, no. Oh my, again. She's not even trying to cover she, her cover. This is, oh my god. Amethyst, what are you doing? Stay down. Stay down, Amethyst. I, I, no, um, okay, I, I, I've got to go get somebody. I, I have got to, uh, I've got to go find somebody. That, that if security isn't being, but I've got to go find out why security isn't here. I, I, I've got to go, i got to go. Coming. I. They just finally ended the match. I mean, it, and, <laughs> and mercifully, it is over. And, and we're, we're just hoping that Amethyst Raven is okay after that. After that assault. That. And. Wait a minute. Let's let the ring. I mean, wait a minute. Dean's left the ring. I don't River think River Corbin's done. I don't think she. Wait a minute. Either. After. Those sick, sick punches, and look at Amethyst holding her head. And wait, River, River looking to wait a minute. That's Ashley Rain. Ashley Rain. Ashley Rain coming down, taking the chair for River Corbin. Brave getting in, involved with this the way she is. And 
Ashley Rain saving Amethyst Raven for more damage. And we see the debut of the Corvin sisters, River and V Corvin, flanked by their sister Kinsey. And it looks like Kinsey Corvin has finally uh, gotten uh, some uh, backup. But, I mean, that that was I, overkill. I is, that I was absolute this, overkill. I don't think this is the end of, of their... I, of their antics. I Something tells me this... That might have been overkill. Something tells me this is just getting started. And up next, speaking of overkill, we have got Kelly Kazarian versus the Iron Queen, Jada Storm. Continuing our Mildred Burke Invitational, and let's take it to ringside. This ought to be a great match right here. Both, both, I mean, we know what Jada Storm is about, and this young woman is very, very impressive. In yes, her debut, in her Sonya debut Mercer. match against Sonya Mercer, Kelly Kazarian gave as good as she got and came out on top. And Kelly, looking, this is a big opportunity for this young lady to come and try to face down Jada Storm, who is a legend within the virtual wrestling industry. She is indeed, and you've got to think Jada's one of the favorites for this tournament, for the, for the finals of this tournament. And Kelly Kazarian also affiliated with the Empire of Pain, James Kearney and uh, KJ Payne, a duo, a duo who just suffered an upset loss on Cyclone uh, uh, recently against the Disciples of Apollonis. And I, I, I just hope that, uh, I just hope Kelly is not letting that weigh on her too much. That, you know, her boys uh, got upset the way they did. And Jada Storm was victorious over Kinsey Corbin in her opening round match and got a receipt on the youngin for running her mouth on social media. And here so is after Jeff, we just saw. Yeah, I've got to wonder if um, there might be something down the road. For for Jenna to storm, and I, I, I mean, I know Jenna likes walking alone, but um, she um, might want to have somebody watching her back here in the future. And Jenna Storm is sliding in the ring and is going to this match should be a far burner. Because Jada Storm doesn't quit for nothing. And Kelly Kazarian is cut from the exact same cloth. Well, these are both two women who, I mean, like, hard, like to hit hard and don't care how hard they're hit. And they're free, calling for the bell. Second round matchup for the Mildred Burke Invitational. It's starting with a takedown. Uranagi by Kelly Kazarian. Jada Storm creating some distance and attempting with a super kick. Caught in the Cobra Cut spike breaker. And look at these movements and maneuvers we are seeing just out of the gate between these two highly competitive individuals. And I, I think these two both are wanting to hit one another hard and fast. Because they know the longer it goes on, the more it might favor the other competitor. And the Aussie Phoenix locking in a Muda lock. And Jada able to break the hands and can try to continue this match. Big right hand to the jaw of Kelly Kazarian. Following it up with a backbreaker. I think she's going to go for two. Oh, no! 
I was misinformed. That was just an ugly toss over the head and a show off to boot. Speaking of boots, what a drop kick. I. Well, I mean, I, I think the thing with that toss is it is not necessarily a show off. It is just a, a literal toss slam over her head. And that's got even with a even with you know Jada's height, that's still a pretty good distance. And Jada, oh, maximum effort there, and fighting out of that belly belly suplex. And the final transition is this Hurricane Rana tilt a whirl head scissors just slamming down Kelly Katarian. And oh. And now we are on the outside, on the outside, on the outside. And this is, this might break down here. I mean, oh, I, we, I, we know Kelly's got a street fighting background, and Jada's and it, not afraid to take it to the streets. So, I mean. And I, I am glad that this down. match did not go any longer on the outside, because if either, if... It was a double count out. Both of these ladies would have been eliminated. I mean, yes, it would have. And I think they both know this. And wait a minute. Jada Storm catching Kelly Kazarian with that swinging fisherman neck breaker. Quick cover. One, two, and Kazarian, the Aussie Phoenix, rises from the ashes and kicks out. Jada, I don't think Jada's Jada, uh, done yet. No, not quite. And ca oh, catching her with a twisted hate. We've seen well, that move before. Well, we know it is a twisted hate because of Gas Corbin, but I mean, that move's had life elsewhere under different names. And it, literally, Jada Storm continuing this assault on the neck and head of Kelly Kazarian and, and now she's going for the back now she's going for the back and uh, getting a little bit of the arm as well both arms actually hot working on pulling the shoulder back and oh back to the back you double stomp think. And I think Kelly might be uh, wondering what she got herself into here. And one more time. Dick break. Quick cover. One, two, and Kazarian kicks out again. That's the thing about a Phoenix to keep on rising from the ashes. And now a straight jacket or a cutthroat is applied. And Kazarian using our training and getting out of that predicament and attempting a big round kick caught with a soleil kick for the trouble and then woo, big hair beal and we can, we have Kelly's understated Kelly's we've understated the strength of Kelly Kazarian honestly well, we, really, we really have and, and and like I said earlier, uh, she's, you know, she basically gave as good as she got and did some against Sonya Mercer in her debut match, first and round of this tournament. Kelly misses with the round kick, and then Jada following it up with two stiff kicks and a, a snap mare, and again. There is that twisted twist of fate. Twist and of a eight, cover to kick out. And Kelly Kazarian, oh, sure shot right to the ribs, and Storm climbing up top, and went, bent, demanding Kelly to stand. Wait a minute, power bomb! She, she might regret that, demanding Kelly to stand like that. What's and, Kelly doing? Wait, wait. Kelly, She's got a baseball bat. What the hell? What the and Kelly Kazarian just got disqualified. She just got attacking disqualified. Jada Storm with a baseball bat. I, I think she had enough right. I, I told you I was worried about the frustration, the frustration getting to her. And it definitely got to her there. It 
certainly is. And we got Jada Storm Jada, moving Jada on. Wasn't, and she wasn't too happy with that finish either, I no, don't think. No, Jada Storm wants, I, I mean, Jada will take wins as they give, but she likes to win decisively. And that yeah, was that anything decisive but decisive win. as Kelly Kazarian attempted to take a shortcut. And, I mean, just absolutely I mean, unnecessary. And so far tonight, we have seen Asha the Giant move forward. Uh, sorry, conqueror. Asha the Conqueror move forward. We have seen Rose move forward. We have seen Jada Storm move forward. And, and a, in and our very unceremonious factor. And in our final match of the evening of the Mildred Burke Invitational, we have got Desiree Howling Wolf facing down Roxana Stone in a match that I am incredibly excited about. Since these two have squared off in multi-woman matches and in tag team matches, but it, we have never seen an outright one-on-one -on -one matchup between Roxana Stone and Desiree Howling Wolf. And tonight, and we have not. in the second round, the quarterfinals, it is the quarterfinals, right? Am I right? I think so, yes. Okay. In the quarterfinals of the uh, Mildred Burke Invitational, we well, have... Well, let's, let's call it the second round. Yeah, the second round, we have got Desiree Howling Wolf versus Roxana Stone. I don't think it was the quarterfinals. Okay, well, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, We've I, lost count. We've lost track. We've had... Look... You've got to, you've got to forgive, Randall. We had twice as many women coming into this tournament as we expected. He's a little awestruck by that still to this day. I am, I am. And with that, let's take it right to ringside. Howling Wolf versus Stone. And I honestly... I do not want to spend the entrance just uh, hyping praise on Desiree Howling Wolf. All I can say is that since her debut last year as a part of the Worldwide Wrestling Network Young Lioness Program, she has become one of the premier standouts for the women's division of this company. And this is her opportunity, her first opportunity for gold. She wants the recognition of the Glow Crown Championship. She wants the title. She knows what it means. The Glow Crown is a very prestigious prize. And Desiree Howling Wolf wants it to be a reigning and defending champion. And I, and I think also for her it's a matter of honor. Or at least her wanting to bring honor to the lineage of the Blue Crown title. Very true. We have had several stars throughout the history of the Worldwide Wrestling Network that have brought class and um, uh, a respect few, a few, to the title. And a few not so much. But we've also had a few that were not so much bringing that. And here we go. Roxana Stone, the Greek goddess and Roxana came in to the Worldwide Wrestling Network, a house of fire. Nearly undefeated, has one of the best win-loss records in the women's division right now. And Roxana Stone is, has a lot to lose here in this second round match. Not only does it lead to the possibility of being eliminated from the tournament, but also it would be a knock against her nearly perfect record. Well, and I don't think Roxana has had a loss. Yes. Since she's been here. The only loss I recall was in the multi-woman match at Kremlin's night. Right. And so she has got a lot to lose here in this match. And she and has a hell of a competitor in Tesrae Howling Wolf.
and referee is calling for the bail, and they are locking up Desiree, pushing Roxana into the turnbuckle, the corner, and will it be a clean break? It is a clean break. Show of respect from two of our top contenders here, and Stone able to drop down out of that suplex, and again, pushing Roxana into the corner. Referee's gonna have to get involved again, separating, and again, a clean break. I'm impressed, Roxana coming out swinging with a big right hand, and picking the leg of Roxana Stone, uh, of Desiree Howling Wolf, and Howling Wolf, wow, what an exchange in these opening moments. Roxana scouted that foot sweep from Desiree and just sidestepped it. And, oh, take down head scissors. And these opening moments have been very, very good. And wait a minute. Speaking of scouting, that is the arm that Roxana Stone uses as a part of her finishers, Athena's way and the gift of the gods. And uh, Desiree really looking like she's trying to take away one of the biggest weapons in Roxana Stone's arsenal. And and that's not a that's not a bad strategy on her part. I mean, it it would be it would make sense of any competitor going into that to take away your opponent's strengths. And here we go, surfboard applied. And again, this is working the shoulders and the arms and the back, all focal points of Roxana Stone's trademark moves. And arm drag, hip toss by Stone. Stone sending Howling Wolf to the outside, to the outside, to the outside. And But she's not following her out there. And, and that, that, that's that's, that's smart, right there. except for this. Howling Wolf using the ropes against her. Irish and that, whip. That's what I, and that's what and, I oh, mean about it being telling. Barrel roll sweep. <laughs> taking down the legs of Roxanna Stone. And, and very smartly going for the cover here. One. Kick out by Stone. And big knee right to the base of the spine and Howling Wolf knowing exactly where in the ring she is and the Indian Deathlock is applied and oh as he sat down with it but it didn't look like she was going for a submission with it and now Howling Wolf we've seen a diving tomahawk chop as a part of her repertoire will it connect and it connects Solid connection there, center of the and ring. One, two, kick out by Stone. And she she frequently uses that in prelude to her um her knee strike finisher. I'm not sure what uh, she either called. that or the end of the trail. And it looks like yeah. she's going for the end of the trail. Stone is like up. Is. And the cover. One, two, three, and. What an upset! I don't know that that was an upset. That I, was a good fought match. I I don't know. Desiree Howling Wolf. I mean, neither neither of these women has a lot of losses in their resume this year. That was a that was a solid match between two very capable competitors. And Desiree making I mean. Roxanne making her way to the back, walking away disappointed in this match. And she has been eliminated from the Glow Crown Tournament. And that means that Desiree Howling Wolf enters the next round with Asha the Conqueror, Jada Storm, and Rose. And, and if I'm if I'm looking at the uh, the brackets correctly, we are gonna have a 
match, uh, a third round match of Desiree Howling Wolf versus Rose and Jada Storm versus Asha the Conqueror. Good lord, that is going to be nasty. I that is that is going to be something that you will definitely want to tune back into the Worldwide Wrestling Network and our presentation of the Glow presents the Mildred Burke Invitational. And join us for the continuation of round two very soon. Uh, we have still got to go through round two of Bracket, uh, Gamma, and Delta. Do not miss that as we continue the Mildred Burke Invitational Tournament for the Glow Crown Championship. Who, 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 who will be who? the Glow Crown Champion and wear that championship, that title, with pride in the World Wide Wrestling Network. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Remarkable Randall Reigns signing off. And I am Mr. Hamrick. And once again, in the words of Lord Cyrus of Moldovia, stay safe and stay over. Now, one last thing, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you see in the World Wide Wrestling Network, I want you to please hit that subscribe button and slap that notification bell. We go live, well, kind of, we premiere at 8 o'clock on Mondays, Tuesdays, and uh, Saturdays. Now, with the Mildred Burke Invitational, we may have a few um, things. We're trying to get things set up for St. Valentine's Massacre, which is scheduled Soon it will be. Bef uh, I believe we have scheduled it for February twenty fourth. It is scheduled for February twenty fourth. And so we are trying to get out the end of the Mildred Burke Invitational in time, so that the finals will fall and be part of our main event scene in the um, Saint Valentine's Massacre Worldwide Wrestling Network event. And so, ladies and gentlemen, also so stay tuned. Stay tuned, Stay tuned. For, our Twitter feed, for, for our Twitter feed for additional information on that topic. And that is at w, capital WWWN, capital O online, at Twitter. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, have a great night. And thank you for viewing the Worldwide Wrestling Network.